Hi there, Gareth here again. I've got a video today for International Women's Day and I'm going to discuss three very different but very important women to British history. We'll start with Queen Boudicca. She was a Celtic warrior queen. Celtic being the word for indigenous British and there's certain areas that are considered Celtic now. For example, Ireland's considered Celtic, Wales, Scotland, Cornwall, but all of Britain was Celtic originally. It's just these places the Celtic and indigenous culture wasn't wiped out by colonization by the Romans, Vikings, the Saxons, the Angles, uh, Jutes, and the Normans. So all these civilizations that had colonized Britain in predominantly ancient history up till the Middle Ages. So a lot was forgotten about her until a poet in the 1800s wrote a poem about her and they wanted to make her a symbol of bravery and courage and resistance etc and then she was remembered again and became part of the consciousness so you would study about her at school in England they called it Bodicea the poem but her real name was Boudicca so that was a thing that's general generally different. So a lot of things that aren't really fully known about her, some things are doubts. But she was the queen of the Iceni tribe, which is modern day East Anglia, so sort of south or central east of the country. It's the sticky out a bit. And this tribe were there. They had a good relation with the Romans and they when the king, her husband, died they began to, the Roman Empire began to mistreat the Iceni tribe. They'd beaten her and whipped her. Um, and when they'd gone off to Wales and most of the legions had left, she burnt down London, Colchester and St Albans. I've been to St Albans, it's quite a nice place. If you do a travel to London, it's very close by as well. I don't know about Colchester much, but um, they're probably all worth visiting, especially if you like history. They're very old places if they were there. She burnt them down, so she was a scary woman, obviously. She'd burnt down three cities when the Romans made her angry. Um, as for her death, they do believe that when she realized she'd lost the battle, she committed suicide is what's often said. Some people also just believe she got sick and died. Nobody actually knows the truth fully, but she is a symbol of rebellion, resistance, and her tribe was one of the armies that resisted best the Roman invaders. There's only a couple of other examples of the Romans being resisted. She's the only big example of a warrior queen we have in Britain. Uh, they have Joan of Arc for example in France but I think Boudicca sounds a lot scarier and a lot tougher and other warriors we've heard of, most warrior queens. So that's the first one. Second one, Florence Nightingale. She's responsible for creating modern nursing, uh, more or less, uh, more or less, just like this. Uh, her techniques that she developed during the Crimean War, treating the British soldiers, uh, techniques that are still referenced now. Uh, as one of my jobs is translations as well, I translate a lot of uh, nursing research, and out of every five papers about nursing that I translate, there's at least one or two of them that make major references to Florence Nightingale's ideas. So I think she's the most important woman in history possibly, just the whole world, not just Britain. I would say definitely in Britain because everybody needs a nurse at some time and for somebody to have revolutionised one of the most important professions in the world, it's a very big achievement to still be getting referenced as often as this. It's mightily impressive and it's very important. Everybody and their families will need a nurse at some point in their life. If it wasn't for the things that Florence Nightingale did in her professional life, maybe the treatment you get in hospitals wouldn't be at the level it's at. So that's two. That's the last one, Rosalind Franklin, Britain's best female scientist one of the best scientists generally. Um, her discovery of DNA and RNA led to her being re uh, referred to as the 
godmother of genetics, which is fair, just in the way that, for example, Sir Isaac Newton is the godfather of physics, and uh, the way uh, you would consider maybe uh, Charles Darwin, the godfather of naturism, and theory of evolution, etc. And with microbiology, they also had um, Louis Pasteur, the French uh, microbiologist. So to have one sub genre of science, one little area of science that is something you discovered yourself, to have a big discovery like that, it's one of the most significant scientific discoveries of our era and in history. The, the whole idea of genetics is basically because of a discovering DNA and RNA, which is the basis of this. So there we are, there's three uh, great women from British history for three very different reasons. We have the great warrior queen, we have the person who pretty much created how nursing is done, and the woman responsible for us having genetics as a thing. Uh, all of these people are reasons of great pride for British history and maybe symbols for women to get behind of people who have done great things. Hope you found this video interesting and a happy International Women's Day to all the women watching. Uh, please leave your comments if you think somebody should be in that three who isn't. And I will accept most names apart from Margaret Thatcher and that's fine. See you in the next video.